Hi guys, I'm Randy and today on BRS TV we're putting together a full reef tank using this Red Sea Reefer 250 as the blank canvas which will allow us to add our choice of equipment for lighting, flow, return pumps, skimmers and more. In this video we'll walk through setting up the tank, filling it with water and turning it into a complete reef tank with your choice of some additional equipment. Standard reef tanks with a sump below the display tank often come in larger sizes and open the doors to a variety of equipment choices and add-ons that allow you to customize the tank around your own tastes in things like lighting, water flow, and filtration equipment. This type of setup is probably the most common amongst the reefing community as it allows you to research your favorite gear to make more informed decisions on what matters most to you and your desires for a reef tank. Along with that, having a sump to house filtration equipment like heaters, skimmers, media reactors and others means that you can keep them out of the display tank and out of sight, leaving you with a cleaner and to some a more eye-pleasing tank. Standard reef tanks also give you the ability to add more redundancy and safety mechanisms to the system, like two return pumps instead of one, multiple heaters, and provide extra room for probes, auto top-offs, leak detection equipment, and fully featured aquarium controllers. The entire selection of the Red Sea Reefer Tank series are prime examples of how robust a larger standard rimless reef tank can be, while also remaining elegant in its design, features, and aesthetics, with things like ultra-clear beveled edge glass and a sturdy glass sump with plenty of room and baffled flow patterns that help to reduce the noise and micro-bubbles from some equipment. The Red Sea Reefer tanks like this Reefer 250 is overall a much nicer looking standing combo than your standard commodity tanks and come in either black and white cabinet options to better match your home's decor. Along with that, all your plumbing is pre-assembled and includes features like a fine adjustment gate valve, a silencer pipe for the main drain, and a soft hose return line that helps to silence pump vibrations as well as flexes to meet the needs of your specific return pump choice. All the Red Sea Reefer options are rimless, include sump filtration systems with glass ATO reservoirs, and come in five sizes from the Reefer Nano at 28 gallons to the Reefer 450 at 116 gallons, as well as the XL, double XL 650 and double XL 750 with a total water volume of up to 200 gallons. Finally, the Red Sea Reefer series is rounded out with two peninsula-style look-through tanks for those who may want to use the tank as a room divider or add a different perspective to the standard reef tank. Each of the Reefer models, with the exception of the Reefer Nano, are also available as a deluxe package, which include one or more of the Wi-Fi controlled AI Hydra 26 LED light fixtures with customized mounting brackets to help you take the guesswork out of what light to go with. So the only difference between the standard and deluxe options are the inclusion of the AI Hydra LEDs, which are certainly one of the better options for tanks this size. At the end of the day, these are very sharp looking tanks and great alternatives to less attractive commodity tanks, and they don't have a year long wait that often comes with going with a custom tank. The Red Sea Reefers also serve as a blank canvas for your personal choices for equipment and doesn't tie you to a specific line, which are really ideal for immediate to advanced reefers who have specific desires for how they want to run a tank. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to set up a full reef tank using this Red Sea Reefer 250, which is just under 36 inches long, about 20 inches front to back, and the display itself is right at 21 inches long. The tank and stand together rise at 55 inches tall, and the sump and tank volume holds a total of about 54 gallons. These front and side glass panels are made from ultra clear glass with the sides measuring about 10 millimeters thick and the front at just about 12 millimeters thick. The real draw to these Red Sea Reefer tanks is that you can outfit them with pretty much any of your favorite reef gear. So for this setup, we're going with two Aqua Illumination Hydra 26 LED fixtures, which we really like for their built-in Wi-Fi controllability straight from your phone, tablet, or computer. And two of them can provide more than enough light to cover the entire tank, as well as provide ample par for whichever tank type you go with. To mount the lights, we're going with the stylish and easy HMS mounting arms, which are a breeze to put together and hide the light cables neatly out of sight. One thing to note here, the Red Sea Reefer Deluxe version will include its own mounting brackets, which flip up and out of the way for easier access. So if you like these Hydra LEDs, you're likely better served by opting for the Deluxe version. Our return pump choice is next, and we opted for the SynchroSilent 3.5 from CJ to provide us with the 660 gallons per hour flow recommendation from Red Sea. We also want to add a skimmer in the large chamber of the included sump, in which case the Somatic 60 was our choice for its space-saving size, low cost, and because it utilizes a CJ pump, which is one of our favorites here at BRS. For added flow in the tank and to help keep the tritus suspended off the bottom so it can make its way down to the filtration in the sump, we're adding two Ecotec Vortec MP40s. 
We really like how simple they can be to maintain where we don't have to pull anything off the tank other than the easily removable wet side, clean it, and drop it back in place. On top of that, we can adjust the flow by using their built-in intelligent programming and wireless communication to pretty much meet any tank type we aim for. To keep the tank at our target temp of 78 degrees, we'll want a heater that's at least 200 watts, so we're going with the Neotherm 300 watt heater, which is very easy to set to your desired temp, and the one heater we found in our BRS TV Investigates testing to be super accurate in its temperature swings between on and off cycles with a variance of a pretty amazing 5 hundredths of a degree. To add some substrate and rock structure for that slice of the reef look, I'm going to add 40 pounds of Aragalive special grade sand and about 50 pounds of Reef Saver rock. Finally, we'll need some filtered or purified water and salt to fill the tank, in which case I'll collect water from our own reverse osmosis deionized water filtration unit and use the Red Sea salt mix in the blue bucket. Along with that, we'll kick off the beneficial bacteria colony with an 8 ounce bottle of Dr. Tim's one and only. RODI water is always best, but if you don't have your own RODI unit, some reefers opt for water from their local fish store or even some filtered water from the local grocery store. Assembling the stand is pretty straightforward, especially for those of you who have built this type of flat pack furniture before and took me just over a half an hour from start to finish. However, unlike some DIY furniture, Red Sea added their touch with cam screws that thread tightly and securely into plastic retainers to keep them from stripping and for better weight support, as well as rubber covers rather than stickers to protect the metal hardware. When the stand is put together, you'll notice a vented back panel to reduce humidity buildup in the cabinet, as well as weld out sections in the top and the back to more easily access the plumbing down to the sump, as well as to allow for even closer placement near the wall. The stand also includes soft padding on the sump section for protection and with the sump installed leaves you with 12 inches of space next to the sump for additional storage or equipment. The tank and sump comes together even quicker where you'll probably want to enlist the help of a friend to put the tank on the stand and then add the three stand pipes into the overflow. The instructions make it very easy to determine which pipe goes where, which includes the return line and a primary and emergency drain. The bottom of these stand pipes are threaded in two places, one for the lower plumbing and one to create a leak-free seal between the tank and the upper plumbing. Now I can slide the adjustable nozzle down onto the overflow, thread it onto the return pipe, and slide the silencing attachment to the primary drain. Under the cabinet, the pre-fitted plumbing takes seconds to attach, and all that's left to do is slide the filter socks into the removable trays, drop in the return pump and skimmer, then throw your heater in and you're done. With the tank and stand together, I'll want to find a suitable location for them if I haven't already. Ideally, with larger tanks like these where they can be pretty heavy to move around once they're together, you may want to set the tank up in its final location. You may already be set on where your new reef tank is going to go, but here are some considerations to also account for. Since you'll likely have multiple pieces of equipment to plug in, having one or two outlets dedicated to the tank is always a great idea. Also using power strips for extra redundancy can help to keep your tank and home protected. We like something robust with built-in protections and power monitoring like this Kilowatt PS10. Outside of that, since standard reef tanks usually have more water volume capacity and are just typically larger in general, some consideration to their weight should also be taken into account. Most likely you'll be fine choosing a location on the ground floor or near a retaining or perimeter wall. However, if you have more specific requirements or getting into one of the larger sizes, you'll want to make sure that your room's flooring can support the weight. Lastly, direct sunlight spilling into the tank could lead to areas where nuisance algae can grow, in which case avoiding those areas is ideal but not a deal breaker. Also, choosing a location that is as even as possible will help to keep the water level even in the tank and reduce uneven pressure on the glass panels. In most cases, if you can't find a spot that's perfectly level, you could add a couple of shims underneath the tank to balance it out. Let's finally get this tank up and running and on its way to becoming a full reef with our favorite fish and coral. First, I'll add in my sand and rock, which is really to your personal liking, but planning ahead for mounting corals is usually one of my personal priorities when aquascaping. After that's done, I can mix up about 60 gallons of salt water with my choice of Blue Bucket Red Sea Salt Mix and RODI water, and then check it with the handheld refractometer to make sure it's at my target salinity of 1.026 specific gravity, or 35 parts per thousand. All that's left to do for setup is to drop the heater in, keep the lights off, add in an 8 ounce bottle of Dr. Tim's one and only bacteria additive, and let the tank run for about a month to allow it to cycle. Every few days or so, I'll throw in a very small pinch of food to keep the bacteria fed and check my ATO reservoir and fill it as needed. 
After the 30 days is up, I'll add in another bottle of Dr. Tim's, introduce my first fish or two, and a bit down the road, start picking out my favorite corals to fill up the tank. Before adding corals, I want to program and set up my light, which is very easy using the My AI app. If you're starting your tank with some lower light demand corals like polyps and softies like these, or even some LPS, you don't necessarily need 100% of the full intensity of the two Hydra 26s, in which case we've developed the following settings for a good starting point for coral growth and ample par. You can set your UVs to 60%, violets to 59%, royal blue to 39%, blues at 40%, greens and deep red to 2%, and finally the cool whites at 9%. However, if you're jumping into higher light demand corals like SPS and crusters and sticks, you could use the same settings but increase them equally by about 40 to 50 percent to reach those 250 to 350 par levels that SPS seem to thrive in. With everything up and running and your reef tank starting to grow, there are a few quick maintenance steps that you can take to keep it on track to a thriving tank. You may notice a small bit of buildup on the glass occasionally, which can easily and quickly be removed with a magnetic glass cleaner like this one from Tunzi, or a flipper magnetic cleaner which has two sides, one for easy cleaning and one for scraping away some tougher buildup. Outside of cleaning the skimmer cup and refilling the ATO reservoir on occasion, many successful reefers also do water change every couple of weeks or so to help keep down the nutrient buildup or other contaminants in the water column. This really only takes a few minutes, and since this tank is about 55 gallons, I'll probably change out anywhere from 10 to 15 gallons. The last part of maintenance you'll want to do is to keep your fish fed, in which case try your best to avoid overfeeding the tank, although it may seem that your fish will always be begging for food. Keeping your feeding amount low can help to keep you from having to do more maintenance than you bargained for, and to help keep nuisance algae at bay, which may grow from elevated nutrients. You're on your way to enjoying a happy and healthy tank, and to help you out even more, here's a few optional accessories that you can add to your system. As I briefly mentioned earlier for filling the tank, replacing evaporated water, or for the occasional water change, some reefers opt to getting filtered water or purified water from their local fish store or grocery store, but down the road if you get tired of transporting water back and forth, you can pick up your very own RODI unit, which will eventually pay for itself and save you a ton of time. We talked about occasionally cleaning the tank with magnetic glass cleaners, but to help you make your other maintenance even quicker to do, you could grab a water change system like this Python, which can help make draining and filling your tank a breeze. Finally, there are other viable ways to provide for your tank's filtration needs rather than filter socks in a skimmer, in which case some reefers choose to use the larger skimmer chamber in the sump as a refugium instead. With that in mind, using a light that's optimized for growing macroalgae can provide the best results for this filtration method, which we've found amazing results from the horticulture LED light like this Kessel H380. Thanks for watching, and if you have any more questions that we didn't answer here, feel free to give us a call, send us an email, or hop on a chat. See you next time on BRS TV.